Okay, we've got something interesting to go over here today. We have here Glasser's Master Theorem, or a simplified version of Glasser's Master Theorem. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus a over x dx. And we're saying we can simplify this thing by transforming it to just this integral over here, integral from minus infinity to infinity f of x dx. Now, actually, this thing is more closely related to this transformation, which I can't quite pronounce. Now, in reality, this isn't really the statement of this either. If you look at it, I think in the original paper on this, what happens is the lower bound zero, there's a constant here on the x. There's a few differences. But if you look at it, you can write this thing a bunch of different ways, and it's not going to matter all that much. Like if the lower bound was zero, as long as we have an even function, we can kind of switch back and forth. If you have a, if this was an even function, you could bring a two out and change this to a zero, or you could go the other way and bring a half out front. And then if there was some constant on the x, that wouldn't bother us much either, because you could fix that with algebra or a u substitution. So I'm not going to worry too much about some of these differences. I just want to make it clear that this isn't exactly how it's stated. So to get started, I just want to show that this works, and we're going to make a couple assumptions on this. I want to assume that this a value is going to be greater than zero, and we also want to have convergence on this integral here. Otherwise, there's also another way to express this with Cauchy's principal value, but I don't want to include that, so we're going to assume convergence. So then starting with this left side here, all I'm going to do is let's just do a u substitution on it for x minus a over x. Then before taking a derivative to get our dx, let's solve for x. So I can multiply in by x on both sides. Actually, let me leave this and I'll multiply by x and we're going to get x times u. This will become x squared. Here the x's will cancel and we get just minus a. Then I'll get everything on one side of the equation forming a quadratic. It's going to be x squared minus xu minus a equals zero. So then from here, what we'll do is we can just solve for x using the quadratic formula. So it's going to be like our coefficients are going to be a, b, c. So we're going to have x equals minus the b value, which is just u, plus or minus square root b squared. That's going to be u squared minus 4, a value 1, c value. Sorry, I know it's confusing where we've got a and c going on in two different places, but don't worry too much about that. Then here, two times the a value is just gonna be two. Cleaning it up, I think I'll bring like a half out front. I'll write it as half u plus or minus square root u squared. All this cleaned up is gonna be plus four a. Then I don't quite know what to do with the plus or minus yet. So let's just take a derivative and we'll leave that. We'll deal with that later. So we're gonna end up with dx equal to one half. Derivative here is gonna be just a one plus or minus. This thing, we'll do it as 1 over 2 times square root of the whole thing. Then we just need chain rule derivative of this is going to be just 2u du. But then I can cancel 2s here, and now we've got our dx value. Now back to the plus or minus situation, we want to, we want to do this substitution. The, this part's no problem. This is just going to reduce to u. Now the tricky thing, going back to here, what you'll notice, actually, sorry, go back to here. Where we know that a is greater than zero, then this piece has to be greater than the u. So when we take the minus sign, we're going to be getting all negative x values. When we take the plus sign, we're getting all positive x values. Well, it doesn't really make sense with our bounds going from minus infinity to infinity. The way to make this work is if we break up this integral into all the positive values and all the negative values, then we can choose our plus and minus. So now before we go ahead and substitute, I'm gonna break it up on the negative x values and the positive x values. We'll just take this and break it at zero. And from here, let's just go ahead and substitute now. So first, first evaluating this at zero, you can think about this, we're on the negative side, so you can think about this as a limit as x goes to zero minus. A again is greater than zero, so this piece right here is gonna be going to minus infinity but then we've got a minus sign in front, minus times minus infinity, positive infinity. Next, you plug minus infinity in here, you get minus infinity, the other part's going to zero, so our lower bound is just minus infinity. Then this piece here just becomes f of u. For dx, we use this, but we're gonna use, remember our x values are all negative, so we want the minus sign on this. So for the one half, I'll bring that in front, and we'll take this, but just the minus version of it. Then next, we want to do the same kind of thing on this one. Take positive infinity, plug it in here. This piece is going to zero, so we're still going positive infinity. You plug zero in, but think about it like zero plus. 
then the first part's zero. This part is going to positive infinity with a minus on the front of it, minus infinity. This part here again is just going to be f of u. Here we want all the x values are positive, so we want the positive version of this with a one half in front. And so it's going to be one plus u squared u squared plus four a. But now notice what happened. We've got the same bounds on each of these integrals now. We also have the same constant in front. So like I can factor the one half out front of the whole thing. And then now with the same bounds, I can just bring all these together and kind of add up all the terms. So let's just see what it looks like under one integral. Distribute it out, I'll just kind of distribute in the f of u on both these. And then what we notice, this and this are exactly the same, but we've got a minus sign on it, so we can cancel these to zero. And then we've got f of u plus f of u. Let's get rid of one, and we'll just call this 2f of u. But then I can cancel 2 with 1 half. And so let me just clean all this up and see what's left. And so the whole thing just simplifies down to just f of u. Of course, I can do a variable change on this for a definite integral, so I'll just write it as f of x dx. But this is the exact same thing as this. And so we've shown that this formula is going to work. Okay, so we have a quick example here on the board, and we just want to get it into this form. We want to use this formula. I think there's other ways, but let's try to use the formula after all that. So first, I'm going to multiply them by secant squared over secant squared. Okay, just kidding. I'll multiply them 1 over x, 1 over x, but same kind of thing. So when we do that, what's going to happen is we end up with just 1 dx in the numerator. This is going to reduce the denominator to x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared. Now putting together the x squared and the one over x squared, you could factor it like x plus one over x, but that's not gonna be good for this formula. So in order to do this, how we'll, we'll just do, we'll create x minus one over x and square this out. When you multiply it out, you're gonna get back x squared plus one over x squared. The middle terms are gonna be minus two. We got the plus one, so all I need to do to fix it, if I, add on plus three onto minus two, we get back to our plus one. But then what we have here, it's exactly set up for our formula here where the A value on it is just one. Not that the A value really matters, but notice the A value goes away when we transform it. So applying the formula, what's gonna happen is this becomes the integral from minus infinity to infinity of just dx over just x squared plus three. I can write this as square root of three squared, just setting up the arc, just setting up the arctan formula on it. So then go ahead and integrate it with the formula. This is gonna be one over square root of three, arctan x over square root of three from minus infinity to infinity. I'll factor the one over square root of three in front. Arctan at infinity, that's gonna be pi over two. Arctan at minus infinity, that's just minus pi over two. Minus times minus is plus. Add this together and we just get pi. Putting it together for my final solution, we just get pi over square root of three, and that's it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.